All right, so first off, we're gonna have Carapace here. We are probably thinking this is the Kelly deck right off the get-go, uh, especially with the introduction of the new double Kelly. I've seen even triple Kelly. It's gonna be kind of difficult to have that round control and to keep units on the board, I would imagine. So coming into this matchup, a little bit concerned. We could throw around one hand. Usually we put the diamond warships away and the great swords back away. We want to play diamonds on round three and great swords ideally we can keep in deck just so that we have a, a good target for Blaze of Glory and stuff like that. So War of Clans is also a little bit tricky um, just because it's round one and uh, we want to say that we have the graveyard established a little, a little bit. I was talking to uh, my buddy Baron from Team Legacy um while i was streaming last week and you know he really um introduced me to the whole pirates thing so i was really excited to give the deck a try and i thought that this one would be like a teammate showcase and and whatnot showing off what he came up with i think it's really cool so you know i played this for a couple days non-stop pretty well So Coral proactively down, they put Siri in exchange. Normally we'd look for a way to get rid of that, but I have to be a little bit mindful that we want to keep removal for when it really matters. And again, we still have kind of the opportunity to, to remove it, you know, maybe after a couple turns if we decide to do that. So kind of just weighing out the options here. So burn it down, maybe we just take some damage off it, because if I pull into a Gutting Slash and hit it twice, then that's kind of, you know, a way to remove it if they didn't boost it. So, uh, Terrorsick Invaders go in Grave, we ideally want to see those in round 3 anyways, we don't really want to play them for 5 points out of hand, so it's one of those things. And at this point it's getting kind of gross. All points, not really respecting a heat wave or anything like that, but again, it's not like we have one either way. So figured it's time to probably get an engine out here. They're gonna be trying to get down sort of the big three, it would probably be like the Kelly, the Defender, and maybe a Nithral or something like that. So at least get some damage pings on it. Drowner was a tech I wasn't really prepared for, but again, it's out of the way here. And it just makes sense with that, the tempo was really not there. They pass on 7, um, you know, they have to put out 10 plus point here, so it would require them playing a 10 power card to get the thrive off that to even get ahead. Yeah, so it kind of makes like Siri, not worth a whole lot, and I don't really see a lot established for, um, you know, bringing back from their graveyard, so I'm not too worried at this point. It kind of tells me that they're going to try and bleed us out in round two, and so now we have to sort of prepare, um, you know, for that big long bleed. Again. Uh, Skellige round two is not very good when you're playing warriors and whatnot, so it's a little tricky. Uh, I kind of see like an undeveloped ice tier and a herald. It's unfortunate. Don't have a whole lot for the herald right now as it stands either. Um, so it's a little bit suspect. We have the scald. Yeah, it's not really doing us much justice here. So scalds there. We replace it with another scald. I don't really know how I feel about that. And just like that, we know what's going on. And so they're playing around the Turg V right away. They're not really giving us an opportunity to remove that. It also makes it a very awkward leader. So if we're going to take a leader here, we don't even destroy the defender, which is super tricky.
If we Mork Varg it, then, you know, they're done down to six, but then we still have to lead her after the Mork Varg. So it's one of those things that's kind of frustrating. So I just decide to ignore it. And we'll play low unit here, uh, if possible, right? So it makes the Kelly kind of awkward if they drop it down. So no rush to get Harold down, really, at this point. No rush to use leader because it'll bring out an extra card for us if we put down iced. And so they're really trying to make it awkward for that Kelly. At this point, that's a really good Morkvark. Wouldn't be surprised if we took it here. I, I don't. Yeah, there we go. And Morphar is going to get more value too, um, just because it kicks in before, so we have to put it to the left, because then the deployability of the damage down to damaged will kick in, and then the on crate will kick in, as opposed to me putting it to the right side, the on crate would kick in before the Morphar, um, you know, damage off itself and damage the unit by the same amount, so it just makes sense to, uh, so do it on the left. The cleanest removal you could possibly have in that case. So this'll just... yeah, there we go. So again, fighting for that proactivity. Let's see what happens. And... wow. So that's a like that's unfortunate for them. Um it allows us to really just play anything here. So I figure we just take a haymate. And Greatsword's not really good in hand. It would be if we had a, like a discard charge pending on the um on the ice, however, you know, we don't, so it's one of those things. Pretty sure the interaction works like that, but either way, um, you know, we're able to keep pace with this round, and, and I don't know, I, I wouldn't imagine that they bring back Kelly in round two. It'd be a little bit tricky for them, but who knows. The hand's really good. I don't really value C. Griffiths right a whole lot. And also, take in consideration, guys, um, they'll be bringing back my best three. So, um, we kind of want to leave some good cards there. The Herald's good, because if they decide to Kelly here, then, you know, we're eating through, like, Herald or the taller units. And in round three, I kind of don't want to cram the board, so... They decide to take here, and that's a lot of points for both sides. Uh, it doesn't really put them ahead. We do have the two card advantage here, which is really nice. Defender, um, I think we actually chuck that, do we not? And at this point, I was thinking that if they're doing it twice, they probably are doing it three times. So, uh, one of the reasons why. I think we're not going to take back the defender here. I'm pretty sure I took the invader instead. Um, the invader doesn't get doomed; it just gets it has veil. So we kind of want to leave something that so that if they take uh, take it back around three, we can play around a heat wave or something like that. So. And it's too big of a lead here. Um, it's really too big of a lead. So I guess they were just kind of guessing um, with the math on that one, thinking that maybe we would just, you know, have to play a card. Or the real value comes from if we did play a card on that turn, right? So, you know, if we weren't counting and we decided to play a card, then we'd probably get 2-0'd. 
It's funny how that works. I guess I just look at it like, okay, that's the hand, that's the best we're gonna get here, whatever, right? I'm feeling pretty confident with this hand here. Sucrus is okay. Sucrus is actually meant to be like for the um, the crack on crate mostly, or the defender. But uh, that was a pretty good game. I guess they realized that they didn't pull what they needed for the triple, or the triple wouldn't have been enough. So there you have it. Nope guard's probably going to be one of the toughest matchups we have. Feeling pretty confident though, because we did beat Kelly in this case, so. We'll just have to see if we uh, have a good round here. Both of us back. We have like a pretty good discard on, you know, um, having that Tursic Skirmisher and then having the Skull to kind of get rid of, or the two Skulls to get rid of the Invaders, right? It definitely helps out quite a bit. Whenever I see dogs come down, I'm thinking that we're playing against Masquerade Ball, so I'm keeping that in mind. It's going to be a little bit tricky if they're going to be making copies of our Bronze um, war Warriors and whatnot and Pirates, and then bringing them out later with, like, a Herald. So, you know, we want to keep that in mind, because their Herald off a of Yobakim or something like that could play for, like, easily 20 points, 25 points. So, Defender goes down to kind of protect our stuff there. Don't you pester me. And I've been doing like lots of like graveyard manipulation type decks lately. It's just been an archetype that I find pretty fun. You guys saw the Lippy video that I posted yesterday. Um, big shout out to you guys if you watched that one. We hit about a thousand views in a day, so I'm really impressed with that. And this will be like the last one I do on the little graveyard thing for a little while. And then we'll switch it up to something else completely different um, for the next video. So I've already started looking at that and making games for that one. So it'll be out, I think, tomorrow at that point. Denying a lot of good copies. Like, you know, the skirm is kind of like a really lousy copy for them. Now we'll put down the boat. And we were able to get out of that round pretty easily. I don't feel too bad about that. We established the graveyard a little bit. We got the invader in there. Uh, defender is fine. We can fish for it back with Sigdrift is right if we have to later. Double great swords, okay, because we get two mulligans, so we know that we're not going to pull into one. It's kind of nice to see. We tuck them both back, I believe. Burn is there, that's fine. And Boat goes down just to see what they'll do. I know that the long round for Nilfgaard, especially Masquerade Ball, Nilfgaard's not going to be easy by any means, so I wouldn't be surprised, I don't remember here, but if we go ahead and we try to bleed, even knowing that we could end up card down for round three, I think that's often the line. Because, you know, they have a lot of really just big plays that are good in long round, even in short round, so we want to see as much as we can before we go to the next round. And at that point, we decide, let's get it done here. You love to see it. Uh, Vincent is big. That's a really big thing there, but at least it's out of the way. They have a pretty comfortable lead here. At this point, I'm just saying, well, you know what? Like, I guess it's not going our way, so let's just keep playing. Because all we have is, like, majority bronze cards, right? See, we got Vincent, Emir, and Roderick uh, in exchange for like a Burna, so that's pretty good. And a leader charge, of course, for the boat. So I'm just thinking we're not going to get a better turf than this. Uh, they haven't, you know, really used coup Terra Nova. I'm kind of trying to see if they have a Terra Nova at this point, and if they do, you know, this would be a good opportunity for them to play it. Again, we're pushing two cards down, it's kind of scary. Rathens comes down. You could see how, like, I'm a little bit nervous about it, but I'm also, like, pretty content. They're going to be losing seven points off that this turn, which is nice. Really good turkey value. That goes down here. Um, at least it doesn't have spying, and we can 
kind of play around nice them bringing that back later. Let's just stack them up here. Uh, I believe we, yes, we do use because they didn't want to grade the locks, so we'll take it here while we can. This might provoke them to lock the second one, my thought process. And false Siri. So that's a lot of provisions for, for uh, a little bleed that we have going on here. So I'm still feeling pretty good about that. I don't know if we're going to get a better Morkvark, but again, we'll just use it here. Because they might not be running Joachim after all when they have a lot of these other expensive cards that, you know, they might not need. Because I know a lot of people when they're running Blightmakers, they're not running Joachim just because it gets kind of messed up with the Mage Assassin. Saw a little bit of lag on the screen there. Hopefully it's not on the stream. But then we see not a fully polished Usurper go down. So, the amount of provisions we got in exchange, guys, I know it looks really stupid bleeding like this, but, you know, sometimes you have to, and you just have to hope for the best, and if we top deck really well, then I think we have an opportunity to win the game here. So, Diamond, yeah, it's probably gonna go back. We're looking for the ice at this point, guys. Boom. So, we actually thinned out pretty nice. Four cards left in deck, we got Herald, we've got all types of different stuff. Um, we have to respect that. So, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, we take the ice off the get-go, I'm pretty sure, here. Yeah, and they're spending a lot. We're just kind of recapping what's been done. I'm thinking that they might not have the Aristocrats left to proc ball, because Usurper was spent, um, and it hasn't. It wasn't even an Aristocrat round two. We had Emmer spent, and we had Vincent spent. So, that I'm counting Aristocrats in my head at this point. So, I'm thinking that, you know what, Greatsword can go down, and I don't know if they can take it. It's good to see the second leader off that, and the fact that they didn't immediately proc the ball tells me I think we have this. Like, where is it, right? Why don't you have Aristocrats down? You have a solid 10-point Greatsword just sitting right there, and then you see this come down as well, you know... I'm thinking that that's about it. We take this every time because their leader's gone. Boom, perfect removal. And on crate can just slap that for one. 24 to 2. And again, um, it's starting to look like even if they could take away the great sword, it wouldn't be enough. That's pretty huge. Puts spin 10. We just get that nice death blow, even though we don't need it for devotion and put down the warrior and get the extra ping off Herald. And the four. See, on crates, pretty nasty. And they're not gonna find anything good. That's how that one goes. I was really happy with this game, guys. Like that one was wild. You've got the heart of an on crate. And then we're going to game three. It's another Nilfgaard matchup, and this one's kind of scary here. But let's give her. So. You kind of know, based on the last one, the strategy, we don't really want to play Herald early on, so we mulligan it away. We want to get the deck as thin as possible, but we don't really want to see that boat either. So, it's fine. Um, I'm trying to get out some commitments from their side right away, so let's have a look at what we can do in response to the on crate. Maybe they take the Yen so that we can, you know, get that Herald to go through later on or something like that. So, again, testing the waters here, and this is going to give us round control if it sticks. Not bad turn over target for them already. Um, doing some math here. Just put that down. Easy ping off the engine. And we can just boost it right back up with our tactical advantage. Perfect. And when I see someone rolling decrees like this, just... Not really doing much else, it kind of tells me that maybe they don't have the pushing hand or their intention's not really to push super hard. But we do have to kind of respect that they can just tempo ahead pretty quick with one card. Um, we don't really want to play something beside it because I don't really want to damage my own units, so I'm just trying to take a turn to wait till they play something before. Um, the Raider goes in the grave because, even though I put armor on it, just because I think that it's too valuable 
for them to take something like that. And yeah, we double up on the boats. This is going to be super tricky for them right here because every single card that they play, and especially with create and play archetypes like Assimilate, it's going to be very tricky for them to even get that 14 points, believe it or not, with two boats down. So they know that, they play Joachim, and I'm happy to see that on round one. Joachim into a Blightmaker is probably like the best one they could possibly get because that should, yeah, just, just keeps them out of reach here. Having seen Joachim, I kind of just want to put that there so they can't get the death blow off it. Or even damage it, get value on the coup. It should be... Actually, it should still death blow, I'm pretty sure. No, no it won't. Yeah. <laughs> Gets in my own place for a second there. That works. And so they have to free it up, basically, at this point. So, Brathens and Yoakim comes out. We know our hands full of, like, pretty bad cards here. Something that we don't really want to bring with us. Um, Burna, I'm really hoping to pull into, like, a Skirmisher at this point. And we'll just toss those. Um, the Scald is probably going to toss the other boat. And then the other Scald is probably going to toss the Raider. We do have a little bit of reach. The Coral Engine helps us out quite a bit here. See, the Lydia is awesome too. So, Lydia, Rathens, Joachim, all in one round. Sunset Wanderers comes out. So at this point, there's not really a reason not to just kind of keep going and see when they'll stop. I'm thinking that they're bluffing a little bit, so I want to call them on it. And I'm a little bit annoyed. Um... Because I did like a small miscalculation here. These things happen. Um, I was counting one point ahead, and then I totally forgot about their boat. So it's just sitting there for one power. So I decide to make an exact decision. We remove the eight. It's going to give us a little bit of reach to get out of the round, and I'm just hoping that that was the right decision. This is like a little bit of those like, all right, we have to dig ourselves out of the hole. Let's see what happens, kind of place. And sometimes you have to do that. Heron over round one, so that's phenomenal. And it still keeps them up by one point. Now I, I don't even really care if I lost uneven at this point. Um, we have really good cards to kind of maintain a bleed, and they don't really have a good leader here if they take. And also their hand just might be like super good, so maybe they don't want to use it, like, it, it's hard to say. And that's what ruined it right there. That's what ruined it. So after everything that was spent, we ended in a tie. And that's perfect that we got the card back. And Yen coming down is really good to see. So now... The only thing I'm really worried about, guys, is the leader. So if we can just get around that leader and maybe play top-heavy first, then we have a good shot at this one here. I don't think that they're going to try in 2-0, but I still want to be prepared for that. So I have a strong enough hand, but also still have a pass card. Um, War of Clans is just too many points to mulligan away. And because... Um, yeah, because Joachim was spent, you know, I'm relying on them not having location to put it back in deck and take it back out. So, uh, the best card to probably play here, looking at it, would be the Morphark. And you hate to see it, but I, I just think that, you know, its responsibility has already been taken care of in this match. 
So going into round three, we have even cards, and we've pretty much pulled all of our win conditions here. Dime Warship, again, like, if we can find a better card, we will. And I think it's the Tarsic and Skirmisher that goes back, right? Get to Skirm and we kind of look for a Freyas, or not Freyas, but Sigdrifas. And nope. So with Yen's Invo being played, I feel pretty good about putting down Harold off the rip, but I kind of just want to get down this defender because if they make a copy of it, it's going to be pretty bad for us. They still find a way. That's a decent coup for them. Start pinging away at stuff a little bit guilt free, and this is going to engine out pretty hard throughout the round. 18 to 4, one card down. I feel pretty good here. Again, playing things in order strongest to weakest. Turgvi goes down because Turgvi gives them incredible value off their leader, so we just want to take care of that. Um. I think we actually take here so that it just goes away next turn. Yeah. And this is where I'm starting to get a little bit comfortable with the game. Did not expect the Joust to come out. That was a pretty annoying play. And so, again, we'll just play cards and see if we have more points at this point. Because that's all we can really do. Um, the Ice is probably going to play for zero points, guys. Or five. But, uh... It's one of those things. We shall do it my way. That's a little, like a little bit of the issue with uh, with it is like, Icing is really good here if we have leader. Icing is really good when we're playing like crack on crate in the same round, but if they've taken these things away from us, it's very tricky. Um, I don't feel bad about them putting leader down for ter uh, Tersic. It kind of makes up for the fact that we have one in hand. It's just going to sit right there. And, you know, they had a three-point leader. Our leader got a much better value in round one, so... Now, there was consideration to actually put down Greatsword first before Turgby, right? I, I guess I just had to accept the fact that uh, it was only going to play for so many points and I wanted to hold on to it, you know, just for whatever reason we are able to draw a card. But uh, again, if I were to redo that, I'd probably put down the Great Sword sooner so that we get uh, more points off it. So I'm thinking here if we lose by one or two, then that's probably why. Starting to slow down. This play will be good. Just hope we don't ping off any of the boat's armor. There we go. So 46 to 30. If they have any sort of removal, it's not enough. They're going to need a really big play here to actually get ahead. And a joust just wouldn't be enough to do it. So that was totally annoying. I've played that matchup too many times this season. I don't know about you guys. Let me know what your most annoying matchup is in the comments. And this one here is going to be our last game for today. Thought we'd wrap it up with some Scoia'tael, Guerrilla Tactics. This could be no unit, this could be Movement Witchers, we'll find out shortly. But uh, I'd like to see how we do against like a point engine based deck. Because we're just slamming down points and hoping for the best with this one here. So it'll be kind of interesting to see how this one pans out. And I just got to mention guys, 80% of you guys, I think it's like 81-82% of you guys that watch my content aren't subscribed, so the best way that you can support the channel and everything that I do here is to drop a sub. It goes a long way, it helps my discoverability on YouTube, and, you know, it really helps me kind of be able to make more of this whole thing, so... Don't forget to do that and turn the notifications on, because I'm going to be increasing the frequency of my uploads, so I don't want you guys to miss anything as well. So, a little proactive play here. This would have been nice if they went first, because at least we get some Coral value. And, you know, there is that argument, yes, to use um, the other leader, the Mask of Uroboros, but I don't think it's required. And the reason why is because I kind of like boosting our boats, and I kind of like boosting things that 
crack on crate damage to back up to their regular health. Especially if they have charges pending or like order pending like the Raiders or, you know, stuff like that. So it, that's why we did the tactical advantage here. And Dunka is like really annoying. I don't, we don't have like a nice clean way to remove it. So if you guys like playing super control heavy, like targeted control decks, this wouldn't be the one. Um, this deck's good. However, it does have difficulty against, you know, decks that just generate absorbent amount of points or you know decks that have a lot of graveyard manipulation because that's kind of the whole play style we're doing here so if they have a xavier we're in trouble decks that have just you know multiple tall punish because there's a lot of cards that we just need to stick like defender and crack on crates so if these cards get removed we're not really having a good time so but uh certainly not tier one but certainly lots of fun we'll say that um you know i would definitely play this one again and this one's for all the people that are just looking for something a little bit different to play, right? When the ladder's polluted with just the same old decks, it's really refreshing to bring something like this. I think that, you know, in time, they'll probably listen to our feedback and they support the archetype for pirates a bit more. I know they've been slowly sort of doing things to the whole pirates and boats. It just makes sense. So I would expect within the next or the, the following expansion that maybe there's a couple more cards that are going to support that. So, And then we'll just be editing little things and making like a 2.0. So we just took that round. Um, we know that they want long round if it's going to be like a boosty Squirtle, so here we are. The hand is horrible by the way. The bottom row of the hand is bad. So we'll put back the boats. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. When we keep the boats, put back the great swords. We still have these two boats I don't want though, the far rights. Now, I kind of want to see leader charges, so will we get one here? There's one. And we still have room to play another card before we decide to pass or not. Every fortress to boost an open hand, they must be playing like a sorceress or something like that. Let's put the other boat down. I'm looking for rebukes or leader charges. What do we get? And there's the second one. They must be deciding on like a Simlas or- oh, jeez. So they use Phila here. Again, they either are just panicking or they have like a really bad hand, but I'm thinking the fact that they're up by like 9 points and card advantage, it's probably not worth contesting here. And so we'll just play that, and I guess they realize that they could probably just go and thin out or play like another special if it's a Gord deck or something, just to get a little bit more value there for round 3. Maxi for the re rework of the deck. Okay. So this is really tricky because, like, off the bat, I'm seeing four cards in my hand that I don't really want, but we only have two mulligans. So I have to say the war cries are going to be fine. Keep one of those for points. And let's see our deck real quick. There's like three cards that I would want, but there's one we don't. We don't want the great sword here. It's just not really going to do it for us. We want a leader, the great sword, so that's not bad.
So hopefully in this game, I, I don't remember if it actually pulls off, but we can see the war cars, the death wish ability, bringing back a pirate. Just doing a pirate check here. We got two, two, two humans, and one warrior. Now, we would get more points if we put down the crack first, but I just want to play around like a heat wave or whatever else they might put down, keep that alive, because I think like if we do win and outpoint them here, it's going to be because of that. Now, the only real annoying thing here is that they have a three, well, two threes on the board, and it's kind of like, all right, you know. The warships, you know, they're called warships, I keep calling them war criers. But the warships, um, we don't really want to boost those ones because we want to have the death blow. picking apart the road. This is actually really nice because if they're playing Gezra's, then we're starting to take some of the things off the road. They're gonna have to work a little bit harder to get them back. I put back um, this one first, the Drakar, because uh, if the if the um, the Witcher hits it, we're getting extra value from that. Go ahead and snipe the three, and then we can start trying to work on the Malena or the Cat Witcher. And they're going for that perfect snipe. 33.33. Oh, 50%. And that was actually beautiful, guys. Like, that was a really good... Really good, because either way, they were running into trouble. Let's put out the d other diamond. Or not. I guess we have the extra turn, right? If the if there were uh, cat witchers on the range row. And the sentry with all that stuff moving around is going to be so many points. At, at this point of the game, I'm actually thinking that we're in trouble here. We still get rewarded for the damage ping, and it actually benefits us here, so that's cool. And what's it going to be? I don't remember the exact sequencing here. I figured we're probably not going to get around the... I um, What do you call it? The, the Gezra's here because... Uh, they're just going to keep moving it with Malena, right, to keep it safe behind the defender. So to get rid of something would be nice, and then we can kind of just pick apart whatever's behind. 
Yeah, let's get rid of that. And Cat Witcher would be like a really good Morkvark once it gets nice and tall, because it's going to be getting the two boosts when it goes back to the range row. Did not respect Brain whatsoever. Um, I actually don't think that's really bad, because uh, Great Sword would have been more points. What do you need? And we can just take back Crack. I think that's the issue there. Start playing on the range row just because if Gazros comes down, we don't want to be taking a bunch of damage. And they're going to start spitting out points. So to eliminate some units here, we got the unfortunate ping on the cat, which it's fine. Probably just hit the Gezras just in case. Nothing else to really hit here. Tree's gonna be gone, and Cat Witcher is gonna be reset. The double sentry with the Cat Witcher on Adrenaline and uh, Gezrez is just unbelievable here, look at this. And sometimes when I'm playing guys, especially when I'm making videos, like, when I see games like this that are just getting, like, frustrating, I'm upset because, like, I want to have good games for you guys, so... You know, I'm thinking, okay, do we just get stomped here? This isn't going to be good. Like, look at all these points. It just keeps going and going and going, right? 20 point turn, no big deal. And that's huge. Absolutely massive. And then we have the crack. Ping, saved, done, one point win.